Hello, and welcome to another episode of We Review Everything. I'm your host, Sin. So, it's No Shape November time, and... As the name suggests, I'm not going to be shaving for a little while. It also gives me an excuse not to have to care about my appearance, which means... No coat. More importantly, though, we're here for another wine review. Review. You know, I am not just avoiding it. There's really not very many jokes you can really make about it that haven't already been made about a million times. But we're doing a wine review today on Lindemann's Bin 50 Shiraz. Crafted in Australia. All right, there, that's that's going to be a good mark, right? That's got to be something. And they got. They got the big knives, so, yeah, yeah, I'm not reading all this information. But I decided that I'd actually go to a different approach with my wine reviews. And, of course, it's just a reason to blatantly rip off Spoonie and just talk about my RP experiences, because, hey, why not? I got stuff to say, right? Yeah, this, this this is going to suck. It smells like vinegar. It smells like vinegar. Fruity vinegar. So, the reason I picked up Lindemann's is because it reminded me very much of that one villain from Heroes, Linderman. And, yeah all of that. But the relevant story I want to talk about, I think I'm just actually going to talk to you guys about a character that I made once, actually more recently, named Lasarin for a D&D campaign. Originally Lasarin was actually made as a World of Warcraft character. Uh, it was a female named Lasara. And I made it as a night elf. A rogue, it was a rogue. But... I wanted to go more involved with it. It's actually where I developed the character backstory first. And... Well, the idea was actually... Uh, what I like to do when I make a character, and I think a lot more people should do this, you take something cliche, something that's been done about a million times, and then change one thing about it. One thing about it, and that one thing only ever has to be that they're content with it. That you're just okay with it. You know, let, let's say you have a character out there who parents got killed by some big evil guy. You know, you're not going to be okay with it, but they accept it. It happened. They move on. You know, that's... You know, they've already reached their closure. This is what happened. I have to continue moving. And that's actually an original character. Characters that don't sit there and obsess over the bad things that have happened to them in their life. Anytime you do that, a character just accepts what's happened. Originality. So, Lasarn's story is actually that he's an orphan. And there's not a nothing about the whole, I'm going to go find my parents, or evil king dude killed my parents off in the village or whatever. I don't know. He doesn't even know who his parents were. As far as he knows, they could have just dropped him off at an orphanage. He doesn't know. He doesn't care. He was adopted by the royal family. And I know that's cliche already, right? Thing is, is the reason he was adopted was because the king had a son. You know, king and queen, they had a son. So what ended up happening was they decided, you know what? Let's get our kids someone to play with. We'll just adopt somebody. So they adopt Lasarin. Elf, he'll be around forever. But as they grow up, you know, and it's not going to be a matter of 
you can see where the cliche goes from there. You know, oh, they grow up to hate each other, and one wants to rule the empire, and one is super greedy. And no, it's not anything like that. Lasarn loves his brother. He d he'll do anything for his brother. In fact, Lasarn went through rogue training specifically so that way he could serve his brother better. He actually acts as his brother's personal assassin. And he is happy to do it. He likes doing it. And the reasoning is because as a rogue, he's able to go out, do things, meet people, and serve his country. And that's just what he likes to do. He could rule if something happened to his brother. I don't even know how royal families work in that case. Like, would they allow the adopted child to come in and rule the kingdom? I don't know. It doesn't matter, right? Lassar doesn't want to rule. He wants to serve, he wants to serve his brother. That's all he ever wants to do. So what happens here is his brother sends him out to do stuff, and I didn't want to make him an assassin. There are reasons. I know there's an assassin class in D&D, &D, and I did transfer this over to D&D &D eventually, and I've been playing him. He's like level 10 now. But the thing about Lasarn is, is that I didn't want to make him an assassin class for a couple reasons. One, I didn't want him to have to be evil. Two, yeah, that's two. I didn't want to have to have him use magic. And the reasoning is, is actually, Lasarin is the friendliest person in the world. In fact, I, I use the term to describe him as being deceptively friendly. And the reasoning is, is that he's not your average pickpocket. You know, he's not some backstabbing... Actually, he is a backstabbing uh, rogue. I want to say ninja, I don't know why, but he's a backstabbing rogue. He is. But, uh, he, you know, he's not the pickpocket. He's not the thief type. You know, he doesn't, like, recover artifacts and get them to the rightful place. He doesn't do that. He's not that type of thief. What he does is, uh, he's an infiltrator. And I know what you're thinking right now. You, I can see it through the camera. You're thinking, oh, so he just sneaks into places at night and kills people he has to kill. No. If he's assigned to kill somebody, he will go straight up to them. Find a reason to be their best friend in the world. He will be super happy with them, be nice to them, everything. He will be their best friend. And then the second he has a chance, boom, dead. No one knows what the hell happened. And Osarin's gone. So actually, his full name, his full name is actually, uh, because I, I actually got this from Spoonie, one, one of his videos. He goes by the name Lasarin the Mask. Because, you know, all the best characters, they always have the, like, the title somewhere in their name. Like, S Tandem the Spoonie, Eric the Red, Mark the Red, of the last of the Bloodfire Berserkers. You know, that type of thing. He act so I wanted to make a character that was like that, that would be remembered forever. He is Lasarn the Mask, and anybody can take up the mantle of the Mask. Anybody. The Mask is just the world's greatest assassin, basically. And I, I, I never actually gave him that subtitle, but he could be, for all I know. But yeah, he'll, so he'll go up to people, he'll be really friendly with them, and then just kill them. Doesn't even care. Um, in, in my D&D campaign, actually, there's a, the, my DM actually had the misfortune of introducing this Planescape-type ship, right? And the thing you know about Lasarn, first and foremost, is that he is a prankster. That's what he does. That's his defining characteristic beyond anything. He loves playing jokes on anybody. And, and here's a tangent for you right here. Lasarin got a pair of panties from one of his colleagues, well, one of his other party members, named Morgana. And she has, like, this super high charisma because Blessing only ever plays people with super high charisma. She will not play someone if they don't have a high charisma. Take, take that as you will. But... You know, this super beautiful woman, he got her panties. Didn't even ask her, didn't do anything for her, just stole them. And because of this, 
he actually ran into the GM's character, his main named Scott, who is a epic level 30. So, and this guy has some kind of huge storyline behind him. You just, everything, world champion something something, blah blah. He's married to, like, the main god's daughter. And so what happens is, every single time Lassarin meets him, he manages to sneak these panties into Scott's pocket. Some way, shape, or form or another. One time he got him drunk, so that way he just drops his awareness down to nothing. Another time he, he didn't even know he was there. Snuck it into his pocket. Does it every single time that he's around. It got to a point where Scott actually would answer his door with a shotgun. Pointed at Lasarn's head. Just in case he tried to do any type of sleight of hand thing. And what makes it most funny is because of the fact that Lasarin, well, because, because Scott is married to this, you know, goddess, basically, she beats the crap out of Scott every time he brings these panties home. And somehow, in some way, shape, or form, Lasarin always ends up with them back. He still has them now. He's like, he... he you have this level 4 character pranking a level 30 character, and. And I'm now Le Lassarin is level 10, and he's still doing it. Actually, Scott became a god, right? Became some kind of god of uh, mechanics or something like that, I don't know. But, uh. Scott ended up shooting Lassarin in the butt with, with a pistol. Right? For some reason, there's guns in this. I don't know why. But. So Lasarin actually dug the bullet out of his ass, had it recast, refitted into a casing, and then presented it to Scott's temple for them to worship it. So they are worshiping Lasarin's ass bullet every day. People come for miles around to worship Lasarin's ass bullet. I, I still find it funny, but, uh, so where else have I used Lasarin at? I've also used him in my LARP, his LARP group, because in the LARP group he's actually king now because, you know, one king stepped down, another king got killed, and Lasarin just happened to be next in line, and he won the vote. I don't know, but Lasarin's primary weapon, his primary thing, and I'm, just, I'm actually finishing him up. He doesn't use, like, your traditional weapons. He's not, like, dagger and cloak and all that. Lasarin uses throwing knives, specifically, and he is badass with them. He's got a super high dexterity, so he can throw five of them at once. Each one only does the flip... I can get it. The flip of a 50-cent piece. So it's either one point or two points of damage, but because of all the modifications he's gone through and all the buffs and all the skills he's put in, this ends up being between 30 to 60 points of damage per round. That's Lasarin. That's why you don't fuck with Lasarin. On to the wine, though. Lindemann's Ben 50 Shiraz. It still smells terrible. Ah, <sighs> uh, yeah, that's vinegar. I don't think this was sealed right. This is awful. Why would you do this, Lindemans? Why? What did we do to you? Oh my god. Oh man, that's awful. Okay, keep going. You can do it. Cheer me on at home! Your tears give me strength. Clap your hands if you believe in fairies. Ah.
for watching. We review everything. We'll see you next time.